Dinosaurs Podcast. Hi guys, welcome back. This is the Thickosaurs Podcast, featuring your hosts, Michelle, Molly, and Melissa. And this, of course, is Anna. This is episode 22, and we're just going to discuss some random, but also deep thoughts, questions that I have for today. So, let me look at my notes. Got, um, because for me, I really just like talking about random stuff. Okay. She's also like a very deep thinker. I am. I'm a very deep thinker. It has something to do with me being an earth sign. <laughs> <laughs> Possibly. It's like, it's a good, but it could be a bad thing too. Yeah. yeah. Thinking too much. You go in too much and you're just, and then us fire signs just like. What's yeah. that? <laughs> I'm just going to look at something else. Were well, you going to say something, Liz? No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you like who, you el- going to. who else is a fire sign? It's just Le- Molly. It's like just Molly. It's, it's just Molly me. between us. Between us. Oh yeah, a, yeah, yeah. It's but just us. Molly. Then what are you? She's an, air an airhead. Sign. Oh, that's <laughs> right. Airhead. You air. That's an airhead. You say yeah. air sign. <laughs> okay. All right, so uh, let's see here. Let's do this one because we were talking about it yesterday. Okay, so the saying, I would die for the ones that I love, is that crazy? Some people believe that it's honorable to say I would live for that person instead of saying that they would die for that person. What do you guys believe and why? Um... For me, I would rather say that I would live for the person because um, I fear death. Uh, I have a very healthy fear of death and I would much rather try to live for the ones I love than to die for them, if that makes sense. Now, of course, it always depends on the situation. You know, like say we are being held up by at gunpoint or whatever. And then the shooter just shoots. Of course, I'm going to end up like jumping in front of whoever I am with. Okay. You know, it's, it's like if I was with my husband, if I was with Chow or if I was with my, my kids or even you girls, mm-hmm. I would have this sense of just, you know, soccer mom. Oh, soccer mom, me, you guys. And <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I keep hitting everybody's <laughs> microphone. But no, I would soccer mom everybody and I would like put myself in front of everybody. You know, so that it, I guess it depends on the situation. So, um, yeah, what type of situation? So the situation is it, it's not the life and death. It's just like, oh, I love you so much. Like, I would die for you. Like, that sort of thing. Oh. So it's not a life and death situation. It's just like, I just love you so much. I would die for you. Oh, I don't know. That would kind of freak me out. <laughs> Please don't, is what I would say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what about like, you, Liz? Yeah. That sounds creepy. Um, I don't think I've ever said that per se, but mm-hmm. I think it's more. I I've heard of that saying more than I would live for you. Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah, and so I'm more used to hearing "I love you so much that I would die for you," and literally people would. would. That's what I'm saying. So, yeah. do you guys? What are your thoughts on that? Because obviously that Michelle sounds more of like is a, like, nah, that's not for me. Mm-hmm. That sounds like more of an obsession problem to me. Like, I wonder what goes through that person's mind to even say that. Mm-hmm. That I love you so much that I would give my life for you. Mm-hmm. Or I would die for you. You know, <sighs> I hate to bring it up, but like... That's kind of how, like, me and my ex-boyfriend's situation was, a relationship was. He would always be like, well, how much do you love me? Mm-hmm. Kind of thing. And he and always th- ask you that? Um, I think it's just, like, whenever we would say, like, oh, I love you, I love you too. And then mm-hmm. he'd be like, oh, how much do you love me? And I'm always like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how to, like, <coughs> say it kind of thing and i and i like i said me now it's like man you're stupid like hell no i'm not gonna die for you you stupid Mm -hmm. but at that point in my life where my world like revolved around him i can see why i didn't go to the point where like i'll die for you still Mm -hmm. but i can see 
I can be I can put myself in that mindset of that person who does end up saying that saying that and then mm-hmm. and end up doing it, you know. Yeah. <clears throat> but me now, no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't do it and I wouldn't really say it because in all honesty, I love and respect myself enough to where I wouldn't do it. It's not worth it. Mm. But back then, I wouldn't do it either, but it would be enough to where, like, I didn't love and respect myself enough to where I would have probably been saying, yeah, I would die for you. I will, um, you know, walk so many miles to come see you, <laughs> nah, 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 you know? If I could yeah. Walk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> kind of thing. You know, does that make sense? I don't yeah. know. If no, that no, it makes sense. Okay, I does. feel, um, I feel like it's people who haven't matured mm-hmm. enough to realize that you don't have to make love that way. Mm-hmm. It doesn't you know? have to be so. It doesn't have Hollywood to. so. Yeah, glamour, like yeah. Hollywood glamour, like Romeo Shakespeare. And Juliet. Yeah. yeah, shit like yeah. that. No. I think it's more of like you, that maybe the person doesn't understand that it doesn't have to go to that extreme. Not necessarily like Hollywood, because mm-hmm. there are some people who only know love to be life and death mm-hmm. anyway. So I don't think it's more of like Hollywood. I think it's more of like, oh, you know, there's love, love can surpass. Um, love is more than that it c- it's actually life and mm-hmm. so maybe all they know is that it's just life and death like that's it like that's it like, one or the other lay my life down mm-hmm. you know <clears throat> molly you say that you think it's obsessive it sounds like well when you say it like that it, to me it sounded like very obsessive mm. that was just i can see that too my mm-hmm. thought yeah mm-hmm. just hearing it from someone like that I, if i was the one who heard that i'm like Oh okay, <laughs> like so. You're saying it sounds like um like it's their tactic to kind of like keep you with them, manipulate, kind yeah, yeah, manipulate. That's the word. Yeah, I would say so. Like, I don't know. Kind of gives you the thought like, oh, the um, don't love me too much. <laughs> I'm a disappointment. Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't do it. <laughs> <sighs> I don't know. I I guess like it's just those are very some of the things that I've been thinking about because I think that like at one point in my life I think I did think like that but not to that extreme like Mm -hmm. I thought about it but I never verbalized it Mm -hmm. you know Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is probably kind of like why you think that you could Mm -hmm. probably see yourself in those shoes yeah but like I also didn't think of it as like I thought of it more like a life and death situation as if like in a oh. scenario where like you said when you're like there's a gun point to your yeah, head. Like I, yeah. Like I was explain. Uh, like I would rather yeah. martyr and sacrifice myself in order to make sure that the rest of my family is safe kind of thing. That's how I pictured of, you know, I love you so much that I'll <laughs> die for you. Yeah. I'll take a bullet for you. <laughs> yeah. You know? I was like, this just remind me of <laughs> my pickle situation. I tell him, remember I always asked Mike. <laughs> 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 so yeah. Mike's going to hate me, but he hasn't listened to this podcast yet. <laughs> so he's going to, he's in for a ride. So I always, cause I, I feel like I'm on the spectrum of that toxic person. So sometimes I ask him like, Oh, what are you going to do? Cause he, loves and and he hates pickles so i told him okay gun to my head the person that has a gun to my head saying hey you gotta eat that pickle otherwise your wife is dead what you gonna do he goes um <laughs> do i have to chew it <laughs> do i have to How swallow else are you it gonna eat it i Exactly. Have so you I'm not like, heard this? No, I've heard her. Oh, I'm just what? saying, like, how else, Michael? I know. Are you also He's like, do I have it? to eat the whole thing? <laughs> or can I spit it out? Or And I was like, gun to my head, okay? Gun to my head. The bad guy's like, you're going to eat that pickle or she's dead. Um, That's about the time you think about it, I'm dead. <laughs> I'm gone. And he's like, well, I don't know. Gotta think about it. And I was like, really? Yeah, think about it when literally there's a gun to my head. 
<laughs> and I told him, I was like, I, because um, he loves chocolate pudding. And I told him, I was like, if someone told me to eat that, eat that nasty pudding that looks like dookie, <laughs> I would. <laughs> Okay, I will like eat all that pudding, and he's like, "No, you wouldn't." And I was like, "Yeah, I wouldn't even wait. If there's just a bowl of pudding there, and what if it's really dookie? But they're like, eat it, and then I'm like, okay, eat it. No, and he's just like, golly, do I got like? Can I just eat a little bit of it? I wonder if it's a male and female thing. I I don't know. I don't know. I think that in. I think if you give him a situation where there's any type of rational, like, thoughts where you have to think like a through decision. a process, uh-huh. decision, he will be like that. Mm-hmm. But I think in the moment, he wouldn't be like that. <laughs> I think. <laughs> that's true. If you give him something hypothetically, he'll be like, um. Yeah, that's uh-huh. like all of y'all. Well, <laughs> it's not like, well, you didn't say this, so I could do this. And I'm always like, man, can y'all just like go along with it? Like, like, I don't do that. Like, like, are you the one Those with the, the guns? Ones that, no, they get to it's, decide. It's like the whole isekai moment, the one that we <laughs> were talking about with Studio Ghibli. <laughs> oh, which one? Knowing them, oh, they'll be oh, like, well, yeah. who's holding the gun? <laughs> can I take them down? Are they bigger than me? Are they smaller than me? What kind of gun is it? That's how. What? That's what you guys would be asking. That would be the thought before even intervening with whatever's happening. I know, but I already know that that's what you said. Is it a real gun? <laughs> <laughs> are they playing around? This is what Liz, what we mean when, we're, when we say we are not ride or die chicks. Yeah. <laughs> we are ask questions chicks. Yeah. Because, mm, like, if they kidnapped us, they would be so annoyed with us. <laughs> yeah, that's true. We're like, where are we going? <laughs> this road feels like a highway. So may, what made you choose us? Yeah. <laughs> they'll be so bored and then they'll just like kick us out. <laughs> or like kill us right then and there. Yeah. I don't know. I just thought that, you know, that's something to think about because there are girls out there. Because this, it, it kind of like leans a, li- a little bit of like how, I don't know about you, but how some moan girls view love. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. there's not, there's all that they know of love, you know. Is from their parents right. or whoever mm-hmm. the couple is in their life, and so if their love is toxic like that, they probably think, "Oh, that's normal. It's normal to lay down your life, mm-hmm. you know, or it's normal to, um, you know, to give up and sacrifice everything, right? You know, kind of like um, girls who girls or guys who um, they don't have experience in actual like love, so they read it." They romanticize it. That's and me. a lot of books, yeah, it talks mm. about, you know, laying your life down for somebody. That's yeah. the ultimate sacrifice of, you know, love. You yeah, know? I'm toxic number <laughs> one fan here. <laughs> yeah. I think that I, if I'm going to be honest, like yeah. for real, for real, I think that watching Bollywood movies and everything romanticized mm-hmm. a lot. Yeah. We were talking about this the other day that... <laughs> That shit is toxic. Those yeah, men are of, very toxic and kind of uh, narcissistic and very like harmful. Mm-hmm. 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 They're like, you're gonna love me. <laughs> like they let you do that. You're gonna love me. <laughs> you're gonna choose me. If oh you my don't god. Love me. I'm gonna tell the other chick everything what we did and everything. You think that you can handle blah blah blah? Like I'm just thinking about that, right? And then would you don't stick out okay? One. Yeah. He's all like, you think that you can handle being like this? And then he'll like flip switches like in a second. He'll go, I love you so much. <laughs> yeah. Yes, right? <laughs> See, I told you, toxic yeah. number one right here. I love you so much, but don't think that you can get your way. But I love you. Like <laughs> that. Yeah. Have you seen that movie? What movie? The. Uh, it's, a, it's called like, Will You Be My Friend? Yeah. It's something like that. Who, it's who's three, in it? It's Ronnie McCurdy, uh, uh, Karina, Karina, yeah, Karina Kapoor, and, and um, Rohit. Hitrick. Hit- oh, Hitrick. Uh, yeah. No, I have not seen that one. Oh, my gosh. You, it kind of makes you want to go mm. to the guy. But. Yeah, I'm just like, dang. No, yeah, re-watching the guy's. crazy. Yeah, the guy's dynamic. He's kind of, he's not kind of, he is very toxic. Oh. He's like, he's like that. Like, every five, well, uh, he flips switches. I'm, I'm not, I'm not trying to, <laughs> um. 
give him justice or anything. But like no. the reason why he does it is because so the whole storyline is they're friends. Okay. Yeah. Hitchick likes ever since they're little. Ka- um, Karina Kapoor. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Karina and um, Ronnie were f- um, friends growing up. They're all friends. Okay. Uh-huh. Um, so he moves away. Mm-hmm. He ends up like sending emails to um, Karina, but then Karina doesn't like him that way, and so Karina just stops. Emailing. emailing him but then ronnie likes him and so mm-hmm. ronnie replies to him as, as karina. karina oh wow so he's effed up in the head like so that he's falling in love with karina but really it's, it's ronnie. ronnie yeah oh. yeah and then when they see each other in person ronnie he tells ronnie that like oh i'll know who you are in person because i love you nah, nah, nah. and then they see in person and he sees karina and he's like Oh my he, god, he, I love he, you, Karina. Yeah. He goes straight to her. Karina. He and doesn't then, even go to Ronnie. Ronnie. Wow. And of course, Ronnie's like all hurt. But I'm like, bitch, you didn't even tell him who the hell you were anyway. You were pretending <laughs> to be the other girl. Yeah, so it's like, what'd you expect? Yeah, what would you, what'd you, wow. Yeah. Yeah, that would goes on for a while because they, they talk when they're like, well, I mean, they look like they're 10 years yeah. old. All the way up to like where they're 20. Yeah. Wow. And so it's kind of like. Mm-hmm. And then dang. he finds out that Ronnie is karina yeah and so he like, they yes. he falls in love with her saying that like oh i'm so sorry i didn't know it was you nah, 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 nah. in secret though you know yeah in secret but then ronnie is like i feel bad because katrina really likes you yeah. now because of course Kareem. you're a hot dude yeah now. yeah so she likes you now katrina. and so <laughs> you said huh? katrina oh, sorry. <laughs> karina sorry yeah. yeah likes him now and so ronnie is all like oh we can't break up this friendship. She can never know. Yeah. Kind of thing. So he and just, so he's kind of like, well, what the hell do you want me to do? And she's like, uh-huh. just like, pretend like you don't like me or we're just, yeah. Cause just marry her because yeah. She, Cause my friendship with her is more important. So mm-hmm. I don't want to ruin that friendship. So just go ahead and just marry her. And he's all like, you think that <laughs> that's um, when he goes, crazy. He goes, <laughs> you think that you can just do this to me? Yeah. Hey, but I love you so much. Yeah. But hey, <laughs> you think that you can just take this away from me? But hey, I love you. Like yeah. That. And then she ends up like getting patrolled to somebody else, and they're yes. supposed to have their wedding all on the same day. Oh my god. Oh, oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because at like halfway point in the movie, they're like, okay, we're gonna tell Karina that we like each other and that we want to get married. Mm-hmm. But when they do that, Karina's dad passes away. Uh, oh yeah, spoilers. Oh yeah, sorry, spoilers. Spoiler alert. Her dad passes away, and so um, Ronnie's family takes her in as their own mm. kind of thing. And now they're kind of like, well, crap, we can't tell her that. <laughs> it's like, fuck. Yeah. And so it keeps going on until, like, the end of the movie. And he just gets so, like. Well, he's, if if you, to understand his point of view, yeah. he's a lot of internal turmoil mm-hmm. because he loves this woman. But then he also does see um, Karina as a friend, too. And mm-hmm. he doesn't want to hurt her. That's why time. you leave both of them. You bitches. <laughs> <Like that. laughs> yes. It's like, uh, I would just leave, to be honest, if I were him. That's your avoidant <laughs> style. <laughs> yeah. Just like, it's like, if you don't want to hurt her, or more like hurt both of them, then I would just be like, I'm sorry. I can't do this to all of us. I'm going to go. <laughs> Girl, that's your avoidant talking right there. <laughs> Avoidment style right there talking. <laughs> so funny. Yeah. Ugh. But yeah, they were just toxic to each other to the point to where I'm like, dang, y'all two deserve each other because y'all are <laughs> both kind of crazy. Crazy. <laughs> yeah, both yeah. of y'all are hazardous. Yeah. Toxic, uh. you know. Oh, my darling. Kuluka. Oh, my <laughs> darling. That they did a parody of that. Well, not parody. They actually tried to do another Oh, version. I didn't know. Oh, my God. It's oh. so cringy. I'll have to show you guys later. <laughs> I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and they go, they sing it. Uh, they do um, a Hmong version of it, and they do, like, copy. Obviously, they copied all the dance moves. And they're like, right. oh, my darling, Kuluka. <laughs> I thought you guys show, I thought I've shown you guys. No, but no. I I saw that they did a um, You Are My Sonia. I've seen the Hmong version mm-hmm. of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep, the Oh, My Darling is just as cringy. <laughs> oh, but I was so cool, too. I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> Anyways, sorry. No, that's good. Yeah, I'm just... So being toxic like that, I think it's just... Uh, well, a lot of Hmong girls out there, or Hmong, uh, like the younger generation, 
I, I'm hoping that they can actually see there's more to love than saying that you have to sacrifice your life for someone and not in a, in a life and death situation, mm-hmm. you know, and I think that's why we need to talk about it today because, I mean, I, I don't know about you, but I, I think it's, I, when I was younger, it was, I was, I lived in. I lived in Wisconsin and there was a lot more Hmong people there. And there was so many people that got married, like at 13, 14 Mm -hmm. years old. And so they barely know Mm -hmm. what their, what their, you know, their own identity is and everything. And they're already, you know, married. Right. Yeah. um, Mm -hmm. Most of the times it wasn't their choice. Mm -hmm. Right. But um, like, I'm hoping that we can get to that point where we, I think it's not happening as much anyway right now. Where a lot, where the, are the younger generation is getting married that young? I don't. I haven't heard. Not it. at twelve or thirteen. No, I 16, think sixteen, seventeen is still. Yes, yeah, still yeah. happening. Still happening. But it's not as often anymore. So right. I think. Not. I wouldn't know. Uh, I'm haven't been really part of the Hmong community mm-hmm. to know enough. So. Yeah, it was That's a lot. Fair. Like I remember being, in high school, like a freshman in high school, and I would see, like, oh this. I was like, oh, what happened to this girl? I, she was just in school. They're like, oh, she got married. And then I was just like, oh. Because it's like a normal thing oh. to see them like disappear and then, you know, come back. Mm. You know, and then um, I won't name names, but there was this one girl. She got married and then she came back. And then a lot of people were talking about her, you know, how rumors are. Mm-hmm. And they're like, oh, she got um, returned or something. I'm like, oh, okay. I was like, oh, and uh, um, I know I kind of regret not like t- going up to her and talking to her and like asking mm. how she's doing because she was like so sad when she came back. Oh, yeah, but she's happier now. Oh, that's yeah. good. That's good. But I was just like, dang. You know, now that I think about it, I don't think I had a lot of friends who got married that young mm-hmm. for at least my generation. Yeah, it was like maybe for me, it was like one or two of them did same here yeah for my generation Mm -mm. i don't remember any of them getting married younger than 17 yeah it was it's really a strange phenomenon because it's like we're all just going to school and like all of a sudden they're gone and um because we know that we're mong and that that tends to happen we're just kind of like oh i guess i mean it's already done right yeah but then again i think also because we're here in Oklahoma. Yeah, yeah, a lot of people. It wasn't very populated with Hmong people. Yeah. yeah. So we didn't experience that like yeah. at all. So even if we did hear it, it's not a common thing, and we're kind of like, what? Yeah. yeah. I think I had what? I had yeah. like one friend who was married because I think she was originally from California, and her husband was here, and so she moved here. So <gasps> I met her in high school because she was another she was a Tao too oh yeah and she was the only girl that i knew that was married and pregnant during senior year yeah um my friend that i said that she got married and then she returned after Mm -hmm. she like many of girls back then they got forced just because they went out with their boyfriend or whoever they were out with Mm -hmm. for Mm -hmm. past like a certain curfew we just still cannot understand how can you as parents force your teenager yeah to get married just you know? for being late but it's also it's, it's i guess it's more of like you know they don't want to phone you more you know lose their face yeah or they're embarrassed like their e their their title or their status in the community is so much higher than um your own children your own blood i always thought that was stupid mm-hmm. growing up because it's kind of like who cares? It's like, who are all these people that you're trying to, uh, what is that word? Save face? Impress. Oh. Mm. You know, so who are these people to you that you want to impress so much? You know, it's like, none of them are, like, officers. None of them are presidents. None of them mm-hmm. are kings or queens. So mm-hmm. it's like, what's the point? Why? Why do you feel that way? And I always just felt bad for those girls that, well, some of them, because I know some of them did go by choice because they really wanted to leave because they wanted to escape. honestly escape. Escape. And also they did love their boyfriend. But most of the times it was because they were forced to. And I felt bad for them because I knew that um, like a lot of my friends that did get married young, you know, they were lonely. They had to, they were forced to go live with 
people they don't know and the only person they knew was the person that they went out with and nine out of ten times it was someone they just met Mm -hmm. so they didn't really even know that person Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. they're like having to already uphold all of the nya duties um at like such a young age like 14 15 like um okay you guys need to have kids (laughs) you need to you need to do this you need to do that you know it was very interesting and um i remember for the young ones that were really young they had to like pretend that they weren't married so they wouldn't get in trouble too you know what i mean yeah Mm -hmm. yeah Mm -hmm. it's crazy I know that my my friend at the time when her brother brought home his wife, mm-hmm. she was still pretty young, like 15, 16. Yeah. And they were like, I think her parents told her because she went to the same school with her. Mm. They told her that if anybody asked that they're cousins. Yes. That was always yeah. like the go to thing. Yeah. A cousin or a distant relative or someone. Yeah. That comes yeah. down. I remember that. Mm-hmm. I just feel like. <laughs> I do see a little bit of a change, but un- unless that gets still happening, I do see some parents that do stand up and they're like, no, because mm-hmm. I think it was very scary. Even when I was back in 2000, gosh, that's old, 2006, 2007, around there when I went to high school, there were still people who still like, gee, girls, you know, like kidnap them. Oh, hell no. It was scary. We always were like, damn, what the hell is going to happen? Because we always hear like our friends saying that like people do come um, and like kidnap the girls and mm-hmm. stuff. But then like I would hear very few parents that would be like, go ahead. I'll call the cops. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah. But most of the times, yeah, that would happen where they would still get like kidnapped or G. And I'm always like. Against oh my their god! Role? Yeah, that's no. how it happened. That's how it happens. I think they're still doing that overseas. Too. Oh yes. Of oh course. yeah, overseas. I've, of course. I've seen like. I feel so um, bad for them. I think some like documentaries. Not documentaries, but like a. There is a documentary. Like yeah. a, I would say like a long TikTok because like they were saying how like, there was a, a scene of a girl. She's like literally on. They're both the guy and the girl are literally on the ground. <clears throat> and she's like desperately trying to get out of his hands, and then he's yeah. just not letting go. Yes. And then it's like in broad daylight. You know, uh-huh. Everyone else is just in there watching because they can't do anything. <laughs> they can't, can't do but anything. Then they my don't. ass. Or I've seen the one where yeah. um, they're kidnapping her and they've already like technically they're in the middle of kidnapping her and her dad mm. comes and her dad helps them. Mm. Wow. Yeah. And she's crying and she's begging her dad to not do it. Wow. But then he's helping them, putting her into the car. Yeah. And I'm like. Um, you know I, that's what i'm hoping because i i'm not giving like those dads an excuse but i feel like it's more of what they all they know mm-hmm. and i'm hoping that you know more most dads will finally have a different ch- change of heart or learn that that's not good for their daughters mm-hmm. because i still hear time and time and time and time again where dads just continue to disappoint their daughters Mm -hmm. and like the way they did it is basically like she was cattle pretty much yeah Mm -hmm. where she was like clinging on to him and he's like pushing her off and he's like yelling at her Mm -hmm. like you gotta go Mm -hmm. you need to leave kind of thing and they're like pushing her into like the back of the truck and she's just like (laughs) all brought out kind of thing and he's like yelling her hitting her that's why i said that i think because like as much as like we want to hate on the dad Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure that that's all he knew. Yeah. Because maybe I should. I don't know if I told you guys this. I think one time, because Mike and I were still dating, but I think that, like, I talked to my dad about it once, and he was very open and honest with me. That's He's brutally honest. And I think one day I asked him, I was like, what are you going to do if someone comes and asks for my hand in marriage? Because he would tell me stories about back then how they, people, if there's, uh, a girl that someone is very interested in they could basically buy her out mm-hmm. um and like approach the parents and say i want i want your daughter you know and um he told me of this really outrageous story where um this girl or this this guy really wanted this uh girl and she's really really pretty but the parents were like no right but then what they did was they uh it was i think it was like back Either in, either in California or something way back in the 80s. And he, the guy, stacked up money as tall as her. her. And he's like, if, he's like, 
I have money. I have as much money as tall as her. If I can give you that, then you need to give me your daughter. And then I guess they didn't think that he would follow through. And so here he comes with money and he stacks it up next to her. And then he um, was like, well, look, I came up with my deal. So now you have to give me your daughter because they agreed to it because they didn't think that he would do it. Wow. Yeah. <clears throat> so back to my wrap it back around and then i told my dad i was like what are you gonna do if, if someone asked for my hand in marriage because i'm still dating mike mm -hmm. and then he was like and i was like what if they do it like that story you told me and he was like well i would have no choice but to give you away and i was like what the hell are you talking about he's wow. like yeah i will have no choice but to give you away because they already basically he's saying like the way that they came to him is like a proper way i guess and i'm like but i'm stupid mom traditions yeah yeah so i'm just like oh what and he yeah. was like yeah i would have to just give you i would just have to accept it and i was like really and he's like yeah and then i was like damn mm -hmm. you know so i was like a part of me is like dang i understand like the dads are like they, they're dumb for accepting that but then also at the same time that's all they really know because they that's like doing it the proper way or doing it the right way or whatever mm -hmm. That's why it's up to us, younger generations, to break that cycle. Yeah. Because that is ridiculous. <laughs> it's like, why would you force your daughter, who is screaming and crying and clinging to you, mm -hmm. begging you not to let them take her, but you just sit there and you help them take yeah. her? It's like, what in, <clears throat> what in the world makes you think that that's okay? Yeah. It's I, like, uh, that's your child. You yeah, know? I... I thought that like I didn't know I didn't know that it was still happening um, back over there in Laos because I have like a cousin that she recently uh, came into the states like well when I was met with her she just had been in the states only for like five years and I had asked her because I was really young and naive so I asked her I was like is it still happening over there where they uh, G girls and she's like yeah actually before I came my th my friend got taken away or her friend slash cousin. And I was like, what? What happened? She's like, well, we were just walking to the market and we're, we walked together, you know, and uh, we were going to go buy things. And all of a sudden she was being taken away and I ran to go tell her mom. And then like I was trying to like get her and it, she just got taken away by like three guys. And I was like, damn. Wow. Yeah. Crazy. Crazy. We need, we need to do better for our community. I think we're slowly getting there. But I think that our obviously our men hasn't taken accountability for um, their own emotions and their, and their actions. Yes. And so what that does is it makes them ignorant or um, what is that? Like arrogant? Not arrogant. It's like they're. They're just really like, oh, like, I don't see it happen. Like, oblivious to it. Mm. Yeah. Mm. You know. Until it always, it always is until it happens to your sister or it happens to your mom. Then you're like, oh, oh, my God. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm. Oh, wow, that's bad. Yeah. Or like your mm. favorite niece or something. Yeah. You know. And always like, it's like, think about all the other girls as your, your own sister, as your own, your own um, mom or someone like that. You wouldn't want them to be treated like that. So, mm. yeah. crazy. It's crazy. Mm -hmm, <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. So, since you're hearing this, do you guys just think it's outrageous that there's things like forced marriages and kidnappings like this to happen since you guys weren't around a lot of Hmong people? It doesn't seem like it's out of this world to you guys. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's yeah, a lot of the times <clears throat> with me, with my dad, I'm always like, if I'll, if any of that happens, I'm going to the police. <laughs> we in America. <laughs> they don't fly here. Okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you force me to marry him, I'm going to say no. We in America. I know my rights. <laughs> yeah. No. Then you guys are very lucky because you yeah. guys were not brainwashed by your, um, by your family. You know, mm. it's very surprising how we weren't brought up around a bunch of Hmong people with how much... Um, our dad loves to please. I think it's more of shaman people. We weren't brought up with them. Christian Hmong people we were, but shamans we weren't. 
So like the, the traditional shaman stuff, we we only went there. We didn't know why we were there. All we know is that we had to go there and help prep things. That's it. But I'm pretty sure. I think I talked to Mike about it, but he knew. Didn't your? I'm pretty sure your mom and your dad told him, like, told your brothers, like, don't if you're dating a girl, like, don't bring them back out too late or something like that. Like, cause they knew about forced marriages, right? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so I don't sure. know, cause I swear that Mike told me something along the lines of like, I oh, knew. you're saying did Mike know about forced marriages and stuff like that? No, I think he did, but I don't know how your parents approached him about it. But he just kind of already knew. I don't think no. I think mm-hmm. no. I don't think it was our parents who told us. That. I'm pretty sure it's Michael's friends, his mom friends, um, probably mm-hmm. told him. Cause like with yeah. Mitchell, Mike, or Mitchell and Matthew, I don't think they knew until we told them. Mm. Yeah. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. So it's like with us, I didn't know that. Yeah. Like it's we crazy. didn't know any of that. I think it was also because our parents sheltered us too. So they made sure like nothing Not, happened. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. no one we didn't see it or socialize you don't go anywhere. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Type of thing. Yeah. So that's so like for me, like growing up, yeah, I didn't have any monk friends either. Mm-hmm. Like, I didn't even know of the monk community when I was younger. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then by the time I was able to date a Hmong guy was when I was already in high school, mm-hmm. like 16, 17. There were rarely any Hmong people for me in my high school yeah. years. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that too. Yeah, mm-hmm. so by that time, I already grew a conscience, <laughs> kind of, already. Mm-hmm. Like, that's not what I want to do. Like, I'm really Americanized, where that's not what I want to do, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know? And so, in my head at that time, that's what I wanted. And so, ooh, excuse me, if it got to the point to where I got kidnapped, I would be like, no. That's interesting that your mi- your mindset is like that. Because at mm-hmm. the same age, for me, I knew that in my mind, because I was brainwashed, honestly, if we were to say it, mm-hmm. I was brainwashed. And so, I knew that if I got into that situation where I was kidnapped, I knew that I just had to accept my fate. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. I just had to like accept my fate, and that oh. like once you're taken away, there's I couldn't do anything about it. And especially if it's been more than a day or two, then you're dirty because mm-hmm. you know they've already contaminated you. Oh, <laughs> and so you couldn't come back. But I growing up back. now and maturing. <laughs> <laughs> Growing up and maturing now, I'm like, wow, that's so crazy that I never put in my mind that I could just walk away from this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't even an option for me Mm -hmm. at the time. Mm -hmm. It was just like, if I was taken away, I had to accept my fate. And that's it. Like, uh, that has been decided for me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you girls out there, your fate is not decided by those men. You can you decide. You need, yeah, you decide, mm-hmm. but you do have to find other girls or someone, a trusted female that's not going to betray you and backstab you that you can rely on to help you a escape. Safe place. Yeah. Yeah, and have a safe place. Because your dad or whoever what male figures in your life they will get over it yeah. i want to say sometimes like like i think with my head though at that time was more of oh my parents will understand if i said no kind of thing mm-hmm. that was my thought back then but now i'm kind of like oh no that's not that's not true mm-hmm. you know sometimes your parent you think your parents is one thing but in reality they're not mm-hmm. and so a lot of the times with me at that time, it was more of, first of all, I said, no, I don't want to do it. Yeah. But then even if my parents said no, I honestly wouldn't care if they said no. Like, I was still able to rebel against them and be like, mm-hmm. no, that's not what I want. So, therefore, I'm not going to do it. Mm-hmm. And if that's something that, like, if it means that I have to break away from my parents, then I'll break away from my parents. Mm-hmm. That's how far my thought process was. You know, oh, you traumatized girl. Yeah. Um. <laughs> lucky for you that you think that though, because like yeah. I said, comparing back at that age, you know, you there is no no. Mm-hmm. You yeah. have to do everything. Yeah. That's why I knew that. Like, if I had found myself in that situation, 
where I had been kidnapped or she and I, I, it was and I had nowhere to go I, I'm just like screwed like I just had to like I said accept my fate mm. Mm. I think with me I had Michelle mm. Michelle was my person that like mm-hmm. if I if I didn't get along with my parents or if some shit went down I would go to Michelle with you you had nobody. nobody. Yeah, yeah, I had nobody. So therefore, your mentality was shit. This is it. Yeah. Because I would have been like you too. We're mm-hmm. like shit. This <laughs> is it. <laughs> but I feel like it would it may or may not have been a different story if you married Moon though. I right. think you're diff- Yeah, your mindset would have been. I think it might might have been a little bit different. Uh, honestly, when I think back to it, I wouldn't have married uh, a Moon person anyway. Yeah. You know, because I guess since we were so Americanized or whatever, Mm -hmm. we are not the typical Hmong girl who's like quiet, submissive, and will you know, like Mm -hmm. like what most want me to be. (laughs) Just kidding. Yeah, like what (laughs) most men want. (laughs) No, (laughs) because um, but yeah, and I'm pretty sure this uh disappointed and shocked uh, our dad too that we weren't. Like my mom. Oh, yeah. Like at all. We weren't quiet. Uh, we weren't submissive. Not all the time, mm-hmm. at least, you know, because we were we were loud. We were opinionated. We fought back. Mm-hmm. So either way, even if I were in like a, uh, say, long term um, long relationship or whatever, if I saw anything in that man that was just so long uh, traditioned minded or whatever, closed minded, I would have left already. Cause there's just there's just no way I can be with somebody like that. Wow. Well, consider yourself lucky that you were able to mm. think that far through. Cause like I said, I think it's it was just never an option for me, or it's like to even think that far. Cause like I said, been brainwashed by like my dad and the community. Cause thinking like, oh wow, like I'm just screwed. Like just that's it. That's my fate. Mm. You know, and I'll just be like one of those girls who just unalive themselves, you know? Yeah. Like, that's so sad. Like, <laughs> stop. I know. No, I'm telling you the truth. I know. I know. I'm, no, just... I'm telling the truth because they're like, you know, if you don't if I didn't do anything, I just knew that I would forever be stuck in this torture of hell or I would find my way to peace by unaliving myself. You know, like yeah. I've known so many girls out there who only see the only way out is to do that yeah mm-hmm. like i hear of so many like that's that's why it's so interesting to me that like my my dad and other male uh figures that are around me know of those really tragic stories of other people losing their sisters in relationships like that but theirs is always like but there's your situation like they'll say like oh but your situation you're not getting beat up you yeah. know mm-hmm. you know or, some, or something stupid like that yeah. you know like I've I've heard um, of this, you know, one relative where um, he lost his sister to um, suicide because um, she couldn't handle everything that was going on. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, she committed suicide. Oh, my yeah. gosh. Yeah. I, so that's why I said you lo- you monk sisters out there. There's a way out. There's more to your life mm-hmm. than um like if you find yourself in that situation you need to find someone that you can trust yeah and being outspoken like learning this from mar- marrying into you guys' family being someone that's outspoken who has opinions and who's loud and stuff like that it's not a bad thing it's just you that's who you are you mm-hmm. know and so you need to embrace that and just like ex- accept it and you need to love yourself mm-hmm. there's nothing mm-hmm. wrong with that at all the peop the girl that everybody wants you to be to be quiet and submissive and to just agree to everything no that that's fake nobody is really like that no, at no. all even even though you say your mom's like that she's yeah, not really no, like no, that. she's not like that anymore <laughs> she is not like that i think well obviously it was a facade you know like, oh yeah of course fake. yeah it was just something she did to oh, please like, everybody it was like it was her brainwashing <laughs> yeah it was yes, her brainwashing was her too brainwashing. exactly mm-hmm. so yeah. we love you girls yeah. you know yes. and you know this community we that's why we wanted this one of the many reasons why i created this podcast is for us to all kind of just vent 
um, ask questions and, you know, like share your experiences of mm-hmm. your brainwashing. Yeah. Or if you didn't have brainwashing and if you were lucky like these girls <laughs> here. I mean, like you we know? saw brainwashing, but not with. Not yeah, yeah, not like that. But yeah, yeah. yeah I'm saying mm-hmm. yeah. that in, in those terms. But yeah, because me and Mai were talking about this the other day, too. Mm-hmm. And I was telling her, I was like, you know, if I got married at 16, like. Back then. Yeah, like back then to my ex-boyfriend, I don't think. I would be the person who I am today, and yeah. I don't think I, <clears throat> me and you would still be friends. And oh, she, and yes. she was all like, "What do you mean?" And mm-hmm. I'm, and I was like, "Well, because we didn't get as close until um, he moved away, mm-hmm. right?" Because mm-hmm. I remember, I told her, I was like, "I remember when he was still down here. Um, I think it was like a couple nights before he left, he asked me, why don't you come with me?' Mm-hmm. Kind of thing." <laughs> I'm still <laughs> laughing about this. My first thought in my head was, what about my school? <laughs> like, I don't want to redo all that shit. You mm-hmm. know, it's like, I don't want to do that. Mm-hmm. And so I told him no, mm-hmm. that I don't, I'm not going to come with you. <laughs> like, n- no. Mm-hmm. And I can kind of tell that he was kind of like hurt, hurt that I said that. And that yeah. was the first thing that I thought of. Mm-hmm. But in reality, it's true, man. You When you move, you're you're like... See, your schooling gets messed up, okay? That's that's your inner self telling you, this ain't you. <laughs> yeah, you ain't about that life. So, You're this life. Yeah, so mm-hmm. I told that to mm-hmm. Mai, and Mai's all like, Melissa, isn't that just your inner self choosing you instead mm-hmm. of him? And mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, actually, I never really thought about it that way. Mm-hmm. I'm just laughing because I automatically thought of school. school. <laughs> Mm-hmm. But it is still choosing yourself. Already. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so yeah. she's like, yeah, so basically, you know, you... Yeah, you chose yourself over him and because you firmly believed that like, okay, let's be honest, you're long distance. It's like really rare for it to, to work, work. Mm-hmm. you know, because it, it's a, it's a lot of lot work, of work. Yeah. that goes into it. Okay. And so because I told myself, I was like, if we, well, I told him, I was like, if we really, really, you know, loved each other or whatever, then we will work on a long distance thing. Mm hmm. You know, yeah, I know. This is stupid. At like at sixteen, seventeen, it's fucking stupid. I know, but like, but still, you know, like if mm-hmm. it's something that we really want, then it's something that we can just work on, you know, kind of thing. And so, <laughs> I thought about it, and I was like, if I said yes, and I had gone with him, like I probably would have like what, three, four, five kids yes. by now. I don't know if I would unlive myself because like you probably would have. Yeah. Who knows. No, How I think she was. Okay, she that, I think that's the extreme end. Yeah, but yeah. I think I, think I would have had left. Yeah, uh, she would have been like calling me, Michelle, come get me. Yeah, mm-hmm. like I'm the type of person who would have packed all my things silently, and my kids, and left mm-hmm. without anybody, without him knowing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I would be so like lost, mm-hmm. kind of thing. Because I would, I wouldn't, like I said, I don't know if he's, I wouldn't say con- he's not controlling, but it's more of, I'm yeah. tired of fighting. I'm tired yeah. of, like, everything, because I already know that we would be fighting, because I was reading some of our, I turned on my old phone from a long time ago, and I was searching uh-huh. through it, and I was looking at our text messages, Yeah, and I was just like, damn, he, like, his mood fucking changed so much. It would be like... 421 oh my god i love you i miss you nah, nah, nah. and then like 425 where the fuck are you why aren't you fucking picking up your phone nah, 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 nah. he's cussed at you yes mm-hmm. <sighs> that's the thing that i always tell with mike and i mm-hmm. sorry to interrupt no but i will say we cannot cuss at each other because mm-hmm. yeah. uh that's like a line we're crossing mm-hmm. yeah. yeah and so his attitude would change so fast and we would mm. always argue and i'm always like why are we arguing yeah and he'd mm-hmm. be like are you that fucking stupid that you don't know why we're arguing yeah i don't know what we're arguing about <laughs> why, why don't you tell me mr smart yeah. man yeah kind of thing and so i think yeah i would have had like i probably wouldn't have unalived myself because i don't think i would ever get to that point because like michelle i'm kind of scared to death yeah and mm-hmm. so i don't think i would unalive myself but i would have 
left without nobody's knowing i don't know if you would have three four or five kids maybe you would have like one or two because maybe you would have one kid thinking it's okay and then you accidentally had a second kid and that's when you drew the line i feel like i could see that you know what i mean (laughs) maybe because you'll be like i'm taking care of the kids by myself i can see it i don't know if she would be into like the birth control stuff though yeah like i said i wouldn't know any of that i wouldn't know Mm. anything about birth control i wouldn't know anything well the only person that you would have called for that is michelle Mm-hmm. right yeah. but like she at that point i don't know though. if i would have even been as close yeah. to yeah, them so like true. i would still be <clears throat> in the stone ages where i don't know and <laughs> that's why you think you'll have that many kids yeah oh. yeah i don't know, know any better. and i Maybe. would trust everything that he says yeah because be, yeah i would be brainwashed yeah you know mm-hmm. that's interesting that he he treats you like that because i always wonder how he treated his mom and his sisters. He says that he loves his mom. Uh, yeah. Saying and seeing it is I two different things. I remember him interacting with his mom. Well, like often. when we dated when he was here, yeah. he was kind of like in his um, rebel. rebel, rebel, mean guys. boy stage. And so he didn't really care about his family until he started dating me. And that's when he started getting a little better because his parents will come talk to me about that sometimes mm. like it got to the point to where when we first dated, his dad came and talked to me and was all like, Hey, I just want to let you know, this is who you're getting into. Like, he is not a great guy. Wow. Is, Are you telling me that they came to you? And his dad came to me and told me that. He pulled me aside and took me into, like, a room with just me and him. And he Remember, we are me. pastor's kids. Yeah. Too. Oh, wow. So but, he, girl, he God gave you. you so many signs. <laughs> Are you telling me this? <laughs> But, like I said, that was when we first started dating, and his dad gave me, you know, a warning a saying up. that, like, mm-hmm. you know, he's very, he can be very mean, he can be very, he can be dangerous, dangerous a little bit, you know, but then when we started dating, that's when he started to Jam become down better down and mm-hmm. calm down a little bit, and then his mom and dad will come and tell me that, like, I think you two be good together because, you know, she's kind of calmed you down, you're kind of going in a better new direction mm-hmm. mm-hmm. kind of thing, we see a change in you kind of thing <laughs> and then like i said but then there was just those stupid ass fights that we would always have and i'm like i don't know why we're fighting like Dang. <laughs> what the hell is going on i don't know what's going on <laughs> well that's e- either way it's good that you guys aren't like that any or that you didn't go that route because like yeah. i said i'm still surprised that you um were able to make that decision because that i was at that age i was very impressionable and if someone that i had been dating or been with in a relationship with if they had asked me that i think i would have went to escape my life mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. see with me i didn't even think about it as escaping i just thought of it as i love this person i still want to be with him i'm gonna go and i'm gonna go yeah but mm-hmm. in my head i was like school <laughs> <laughs> All that shit that we were you were brainwashed hard. a different way. <laughs> yeah. All that shit that you worked hard for will disappear mm-hmm. going up there. Mm, wow. Mm. But again, edu- education was drilled in that was into us that it was very important too. Yeah. So. Yeah. That's crazy. That's like um, our teachers sometimes they'd be like, you know, you have very perfect attendance. And I'm like, yeah, because if we missed one, we would get in trouble. Yep. Yeah. I remember that. And they're like, really? And I'm like, yeah. Yeah, so it was just, um, it was different. It wasn't, again, I don't know. Wow. It was a weird thought that came up to my head. Mm-hmm. I would have, yeah, been so alienated from my family. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This is crazy. Mm-hmm. Did you have another sister? No. <laughs> 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 kind of like yeah. scenario. Mm-hmm. Wow. Or like, I don't know, because molly at that time was really young she was like yeah. what 10 11 yeah I so i wouldn't have even known how molly is yeah you know that's crazy to me right i'm just i'm just glad that you guys have uh you guys are strong-headed to where like you you're you know what you want and what you didn't want and to put your foot cr- down mm-hmm. because like i said that at that time i didn't even know like i only to up only till recently um like three or four years ago that i actually had that this i was able to able to put my foot down and stand up for myself mm-hmm. so 
um i would say that it was good parenting on your on your parents part that you they actually respected you when you said no when you were younger and stuff because i re- i re- recognize that when the way that your parents parent they would uh listen to you or like if you said no or mm-hmm. something like they'll leave it alone but then um with my with the parenting that i was raised with it's kind of like there is no no and you're going to do what i want you have no and voice. you have no voice yeah you know i personally feel like i couldn't say no to my parents until very recently mm-hmm. too like within maybe the last f- five years i want to mm-hmm. say mm-hmm. And it was because of, oh, in my thought, it was, oh, they, they still provide for me. Like, I'm still mm-hmm. in their house. They're mm-hmm. still paying for this for me. Mm-hmm. So I can't really say no. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, but then it wasn't until recently where I'm kind of like, no. Like, I had to become very mature to speak to my dad when mm-hmm. I said no. Yeah. You know, and I think that's what kind of had him respect my no is that I came to him very maturely when he asked about something you set a boundary yeah and i Mm -hmm. said no i'm not gonna do it or i don't want to do it anymore kind of thing Mm -hmm. and he'll ask why and then i'll tell him and he'll be like oh okay well if you don't want to do it then that's that's okay then kind of thing and i'm kind of like what but either way yeah that was a possibility for you guys yeah Mm -hmm. there's no no in my Um, the way that my upbringing was yeah if i brought up a no it's like why do you not love me? Yeah, it used to be like that. <laughs> yeah, it used to be like that when we were younger. Like yeah. No. So yeah. it's crazy to me. But yeah, because I think it's funny how some parents are like, no means you don't love them no more. And there are no boundaries. Boundaries also mean no. <laughs> you know, I secretly think that my dad still thinks like that a little bit. And that's why he gets so, like, butt but hurt. Oh, I, I'm pretty sure. Because yeah. that's all he was raised with. Yeah, know? but I think but he kind of just keeps it to himself now. Instead mm-hmm. of having to blow it into proportion oh. to a, a mm-hmm. bigger thing. Yeah. Yeah. Because he you just know. knows that that's not going to do anything. Yeah, with honest. us. So funny. He wanted to talk about it last night. Uh, <laughs> cancer with his emotions <laughs> and he loves to manipulate. Yeah. yeah. So. Either way, that's still good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. I think that's that's something a lot of Hmong girls struggle with, too, is saying no. Mm-hmm. I think not just Hmong girls. I think that like, a lot of the younger generation, they probably, one, are afraid to disappoint their parents because, mm-hmm. like, they're raised that you don't want to disappoint your parents. So you got to do everything. Mm-hmm. I came here and I did this you for you. Yeah, it's that whole immigrant, children of immigrant thinking. Mm-hmm. I think I've seen it online and they're like, the. The immigrant parents come, they work, 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 because they have to start from the bottom. Mm -hmm. And then they have their children, and then they tell their children, you have to do this Mm -hmm. because all the sacrifice that I made, so you have to do this. Mm -hmm. You have to do that. Right. Yeah. There's no And I counter that by saying, your children did not ask to be born. You chose to have kids. Yeah. Yeah, that was like a slap in the face. Mm -hmm. i'm sorry i mean (laughs) that's just how i how i see it now that i'm a parent Mm -hmm. it's kind of like so you basically had kids just so they could take care of you yeah you know because it's like that's not the reason why you have kids or that shouldn't be the reason why you have kids this is very hard for them to change that mindset because if you learn about not giving them an excuse but you learn about the reason why they had children and they had multiple wives and all that stuff was to share labor and all that but right that's all they were raised with so i think they're they're given like a shock or cold water to the face when their kids are like no like Mm -hmm. why do i have to sacrifice my mental health my physical being for you my financial health, my happiness yeah Mm -hmm. so i don't know that's another discussion we can probably talk about next time but Mm -hmm. anyway I think this is probably a good spot to stop. Yeah. <coughs> Did you guys have any other questions? No, I don't have mm-hmm. any no. interjections. My my last message is just to those uh, Hmong uh, younger sisters and brothers out there, anybody or who's the same age as me, if they feel like, if you feel that you have nowhere to go or if you feel like, um there's nobody to listen to you you know there's a space for you 
um, it's here. You can comment below or you can follow us, message us on Instagram or anything, and we can try to help out the best that we can. But this is the end of episode 22, and we hope that you continue to listen. So, yeah. Bye, Bye guys. Bye. <laughs>